Hey everyone, Joe here. In today's Final Cut 10 uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you what I do for audio adjustments on all my videos. So, as you can see, we have the tutorial from last time uh, still brought in here. And that's the, one, the clip we're going to be using to show you how I adjust all my audio and stuff. Now, everybody's audio adjustments are always a little bit different. And that's because everybody's audio equipment is always a little bit different from each other's. So everybody uses different uh, ways of recording into the uh, computer system or to the audio boards, different type of microphones, different uh, level adjustments, depending on the environment they're in. So this is basically a not, what I'm trying to say here is this tutorial will not get you perfect audio on your system, but it give you an idea of what you can do to help achieve that. So let's get in here and get started. Now, the first thing I like to do is go down to my uh, all the audio and uh, video effects and go down to levels and use compressor now I want to use the compressor that's listed under logic because I really like logic's compressor now we can take this turn around and drop it onto my timeline here now if you have individual audio and stuff you can go down here to expand audio components and drop it effect down onto each individual timeline itself so since I only have one audio track on this one, does I'm not going to worry with it because that's the one I'm be using. Okay, now I'll go up here. We now have compressor. Now you have your default setting here. One second. Now you have your default setting here, and this will help quite a bit. Now watch me when I turn this off. You can look at the timeline, how the audio changes, how it brings it up. All right. Now I have one here. I already have set myself. And I'm going to use Joe 1. And this is the one I use. Now I like to use an attack of 19 milliseconds and a release of 310 milliseconds. Now attack and release sounds just uh, just like they sound. This is how soon the uh, compressor will adjust my audio. And this is how long it will linger uh, around before dropping off. Okay, and that's the best way I can explain this. Now you get to compressor threshold. Now this is adjusting the audio at the bottom end of your waveform down here. Now you have a uh, limiter threshold and this is how far you want it to go before it can break out. Now I never want mine to, uh, to break out above negative two decibels so I have it limited right there. And at the bottom I never want my audio to go below 18.5 decibels. Now you also have a gain here. I have overall gain of one decibel on mine. So if I bring that up higher, you can see it brings up all the audio. Now you can bring that up more if you want to, but you might introduce some, say, some uh, noise, background noise, and also uh, can introduce some distortion in your audio. The same thing can be uh, for your limiter threshold and your compressor threshold. So if I drop, say, a lot lower on that one, you know, you know it starts bringing it up but it could introduce more noise. So I have to keep mine around about there. Sometimes I might bring it up higher, but it won't really bring out a lot of us in the bottom there. So I want to keep mine around 18.5 to 19. Okay. The other here is limiter threshold. If I bring it up higher, as you can notice the peaks of my waveforms get higher, but have the possibility of breaking out and not sounding you know, uh, very good. So what I'm going to explain that is, if we go over here, well, in the middle of the screen, you can turn on your uh, volume meter here. You have a zero decibel, and you have a negative six, negative 12, 20, so on. You never want to break above zero decibels. In the, and you never want to go below a negative six. So a compressor, what it does is it works to keep your audio within your set parameters. In my case, I want it to stay above a negative six as much as possible or around a negative six, but definitely never go above zero. That way you're not yelling at people and not whispering at them at the same time. It kind of gets uh, your audio look better. This is because, for example, in my case, I have a tendency to start out kind of loud, but when I'm talking about something, it starts getting quieter. This kind of helps limit that. Now, you can limit it completely, but it will add a lot of distortion to your, uh, your audio and stuff, so you want to watch that. In this case, just a little bit, you know, less can be more. 
Okay. Now, I'm not going to go into compressor any more than that, but, you know, do check it out. All right. Now, the next here is pan mode. Now, all my audio tracks are left and right audio. So, I have no reason to go into stereo or anything else of that nature. Now, you can adjust the left or right by using the pan amount right here. It says pan amount, but I really don't like the way it says that. It's actually left or right. But you also got basic surround and all these other surround types here. But unless you're doing DVD video or Blu-ray and stuff, that's really not going to apply to most people. For example, YouTube and stuff is pretty much all going to be just stereo. And most DVD at work is just going to be stereo left and right. So above that, you do see the little volume. So you can adjust the volume there if you wanted to on your audio track. Now we can go down here uh, to audio enhancements. Now you notice I have mine on flat and that is the default. Now you can go down to voice enhancement, music enhancement, loudness, hum reduction, and so on. Now what I recommend is find the one that complements your voice and your audio uh, situation the best. For me here in my office and stuff and the way I sound, loudness works the best for me, but it may not work the best for you. Keep that in mind. Now, if you need to adjust your own audio stuff, you can bring up the graphic EQ here, and you can have a choice between uh, 10 bands and 31 bands to adjust and fine-tune your audio the way you need it. Okay. Now we have audio analysis. Now, mine says no problems detected because there really isn't. I've had my audio equipment set up fairly well. But we have a few things you can go through here. Now, you have loudness here at the top. Now, I can turn that on and turn it off to show you here. This is a basic, another version of a compressor. I don't really like this one that much. It doesn't work the well, uh, very well for me personally. Although I did use it at first until I got uh, into Logic's compressor better. So if you're new, this one might work okay for you. Now, I do use background noise uh, removal, and I just leave it at the default 50% because that works the best for me in my office. It seems to... Uh, take away the air conditioner noise and stuff in the background without affecting my voice and stuff too much. Now, it sounds a little bit better for my voice and the audio quality the further I bring it down. However, the air conditioner noise and the background hum and rumble is more present, and I don't want that. So I leave mine at 50. It seems to be the happy medium point, the way I have very all my audio equipment set up. Now you have hum removal. Now, hum removal is just if you're around a lot of power lines, a lot of heavy electrical equipment, this can help remove, uh, remove hum noise and stuff in your uh, uh, room. Now, you have the ops between 50 hertz and 60 hertz. However, this actually causes audio distortion for me and makes my video uh, audio sound really horrible, so I leave it turned off. Okay. Now that we're done with that, that is simply it. Uh, as you can see, it cleaned up a lot of the the actual, uh, show you here, the background noise removal, all that low end down here on this uh, waveform. I click on it, you see it cleans up the audio waveform really, really well. And that gives me, you know, really decent sound. I, mean, I don't have the best audio sounding equipment. Or the best sound for any by any means. There's a lot of people with much better audio equipment and better sounding videos than me. But this actually works quite well for me and work, gives me some really decent results. So this is what I use. This is how I've been using everything. Like I said, everybody's audio setup will be different based upon equipment, environmental conditions, and so on. So but I hope it, this gives you a good direction on which way uh, what you can do to actually improve your audio. So if you like this video, you know, how about a thumbs up? A thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe is free. It's for you and lets you know when I release more videos. Now, at the end of the video here, I want to show this uh, clip here before and after the audio so you can get an idea of how what it was before I started and how it was at, by the end of this tutorial. So until next time, everyone. You know, thank you for watching. Audio sync in three, two, one. Hey everyone, this is Joe. Today I'm showing you how to sync your audio up in Final Cut Pro. 
using a three clap method. Audio sync in three, two, one. Hey everyone, this is Joe. Today I'm showing you how to sync your audio up in Final Cut Pro using a three clap method. Audio sync in three, two, one. Hey everyone, this is Joe. Today I'm showing you how to sync your audio up in Final Cut Pro using a three clap method. Audio sync in three, two, one. Hey everyone, this is Joe. Today I'm showing you how to sync your audio up in Final Cut Pro using a three clap method.